Thanks to Dashlane for sponsoring this video. Find out more later in the video. Hey, 42 here. Science fiction, films and books have done a pretty remarkable job of predicting the future. Jules Verne imagined the moon landing just over a hundred years before it actually took place, in From the Earth to the Moon. George Orwell glimpsed aspects of governmental surveillance in his seminal novel 1984. And Edward Bellamy dreamt up cards that could be used to make payments all the way back in 1888. It's him we have to thank for the term credit card, by the way. But one of the most famous sci-fi tropes of them all, teleportation, is still yet to come to pass. Or is it? Believe it or not, teleportation is actually already possible. And I don't just mean theoretically possible either. Those sneaky scientist types have been at it for years. The bad news is this particular kind of teleportation is a little bit different to the handy just teleporting to the shops to get some milk, kinds most often depicted in sci-fi films. But before I get onto that, I need to clear something up. Since we're talking about sci-fi and teleportation, the obvious place to start is with Star Trek. And when I mention the words Star Trek and teleportation in the same sentence, that little part of your brain that makes subconscious connections has probably already said, beam me up, Scotty, inside your head. As you probably know, this legendary catchphrase was uttered by Captain Kirk to his chief engineer, Scotty, whenever he wanted to return to his ship via its handy transporter, an expensive optional upgrade on all top-of-the-line starships. Except that's never actually happened. Not the teleporting bit, I mean the catchphrase. Never once in the history of the original Star Trek series and films was the phrase, beam me up Scotty, ever uttered. That's some Mandela effect fuel right there. And you can add fuel to your personal security with Dashlane, who've kindly sponsored today's video. Dashlane creates strong and unique passwords for all your online accounts and auto fills them. So you never have to click forgot password ever again. And you don't have to sweat about the extremely rare chance that Dashlane could be breached because Dashlane safely stores and decrypts your data on your local device only using your master password. This means that Dashlane never has access to your personal data and any hacker would only see random noise. Dashlane also also fills your credit card information whilst online shopping, so you can make purchases without having to fetch your wallet. Dashlane has a built-in VPN to encrypt your data and keep your online activity anonymous. Best of all, it works on any device. So whether you're protecting your top secret blueprints to your teleportation machine or just videos of your cat, there's honestly no better way to make your online world impenetrable than by using Dashlane. From my experience, Dashlane is the best all bases covered security and time saving tool out there. You can try Dashlane for free on your first device by heading to www.dashlane.com forward slash 42. Then, if you decide you want to upgrade to premium, use my code 42 for 10% off. Anyway, as I mentioned, teleportation is actually already here. Scientists proved it was possible, theoretically, way back in 1993. And the first actual teleportation was carried out experimentally in 1997. But as you've probably already gathered, considering your daily commute is almost certainly not via teleporter, unless your office address happens to include the words Area 51, what we're talking about here is not full-on human teleportation. In fact, it isn't even teleportation of inanimate objects. What scientists currently refer to as teleportation is, for the most part, quantum teleportation. And quantum teleportation is, I'm afraid to say, kind of cheating. For starters, we're only able to use it to teleport quantum information, not physical matter. That has some pretty exciting implications for things like quantum computing, and specifically a quantum internet, but it isn't all that much use for human teleportation, 
at least not yet. Quantum teleportation relies on what Einstein famously once called spooky action at a distance, which now has the slightly more grown-up name of quantum entanglement. If you're interested in exactly what that is, then I can highly recommend dedicating a significant portion of your life to getting a degree in physics. But for a somewhat watered-down YouTube version, quantum entanglement occurs when two particles become linked, entangled, so that their quantum states are interdependent. In essence, the entangled particles act as a single quantum object. That means that if we do something to one of the particles, like measure its momentum or spin, that action is reflected in the quantum state of the entangled particle too. The spooky part about all of this, as Einstein put it, is that two entangled particles will continue to act as a single quantum object in this way, no matter how far apart they are. That means a physical operation carried out on a particle here on Earth would be reflected instantaneously on its entangled partner particle, even if it was literally on the other side of the universe. Scientists use this incredibly weird property, along with some ingenious jiggery-pokery, that allows them to circumvent Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, to transfer or teleport information across large distances. The current record stands at 1,400 kilometers. But if we're being completely honest, the use of the word teleport here is pretty misleading. In fact, I've got half a mind to report science to the Advertising Standards Authority on grounds of false advertising. This isn't really teleportation, not in the sense you or I or Star Trek meant it. Quantum teleportation is about the transfer of information, data. No physical matter is moved at all. But thinking about it, information is powerful stuff. And if you had enough of it, you could theoretically teleport, for example, the underlying data of the entire molecular makeup of a cup, a pen or maybe even an entire human being. Then you could use that perfect blueprint to build an exact copy somewhere else far away. And that does sound, at least a little bit, like teleportation. Unfortunately, here we hit a snag. Well, about seven octillion snags, to be precise, that's roughly how many atoms you're made of. Seven octillion. It's a number so absurdly huge it sounds like I just made it up for effect. But I didn't, I promise. To measure the quantum state and exact position of every single atom in your body would be akin to precisely mapping the universe. Like, literally. You are made of more atoms than there are thought to be stars in the entire 93 billion light year observable universe. The idea we could ever simply scan something that complicated is pushing the boundaries of credulity. But for the sake of argument, let's just say we could. Even then, transferring so much data from our scanner to some distant receiver in order to complete a successful saucer teleportation would take a very, very long time indeed. Exactly how long is difficult to say with confidence, but physics students at the University of Leicester had a good go at figuring it out. And according to them, to transfer the total data required to teleport a human being into orbit around the Earth, would take somewhere in the region of 5,000 trillion years. That's quite a long time. About 350,000 times longer than the universe has existed, in case you're wondering. Assuming a fit and healthy individual can walk about 30 miles a day, in 5,000 trillion years, you could hike well over 9 million light years. Yeah, when your hyper-futuristic teleportation technology 
is outperformed by your average unladen human, moving at a brisk walking pace, you know you're doing something wrong. And these absurd numbers are only half the problem anyway. Let's not forget, this process would only make a copy of whatever was being teleported a clone. Even if that clone was atom perfect, to the point it shared your thoughts, memories and feelings, it still wouldn't actually be you. If anything, by teleporting in this way, all you'd really be doing is creating a perfect doppelganger capable of sleeping with your girlfriend without her realising it wasn't you. This kind of copy and paste teleportation seems like a non-starter, but how about a cut and paste version? To achieve something like that, we would not only need to scan the human being, but physically dematerialize them, atom by atom. Then, beam that physical matter somewhere and rematerialize it, perfectly formed. Whether or not this rematerialized human would be any more you than the cloned version is debatable. But that debate is probably redundant anyway, so let's not worry about it for now. After all, we have no way of taking a human body apart piece by tiny piece, nor do we have the technology to beam large quantities of physical matter through other matter, or even through empty space. And even if we did, I'm going to go out on a limb here and assume that being taken apart atom by atom would probably make you very dead. As for all the king's horses and all the king's men trying to put you back together again, even with the most advanced 3D printer imaginable, we would need to manipulate physical matter at the atomic scale to form a fully functioning human being based on a blueprint that would need to be accurate for seven octillion atoms, right down to the angstrom. That's a unit of length equal to one ten billionth of a metre. It's true that at the ahem, bleeding edge of science, we've been able to 3D print internal organs, including a fully functioning human heart. But that is absolutely nothing remotely close to the prospect of printing a living human being. Realistically, any kind of teleportation that involves scanning and transporting a human being is pretty much a non-starter, at least in the conceivable future. But never say never, I guess. Many of the technologies that seem entirely commonplace to us today would have been considered impossible pipe dreams to leading scientists just a few hundred years ago. So then, that kind of sums up where we are on the whole teleportation thing at the moment. It requires technology so absurdly advanced that we can't even really imagine what they might be at the moment. As Arthur C. Clarke once said, any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And at this point, materialising a non-dead human being out of thin air is a technology firmly restricted to the classrooms of Hogwarts. It might not all be doom and gloom, though. If taking apart and rebuilding a human is beyond our current abilities, perhaps we can simplify things by using a form of teleportation that conveniently leaves the human intact. One of the most commonly proposed ways to do this is through handy folds in space linked by wormholes, also known as Einstein-Rosen bridges. Now, travel by wormhole isn't exactly teleportation in the strictest sci-fi sense. It's more like a Mario Kart shortcut. You don't travel any faster than you would otherwise on the track, you just reach your destination a whole lot sooner. Unfortunately, there are quite a few problems with travel by wormhole. First and most importantly, we don't actually know for sure that wormholes exist. We just think they probably should, according to the maths that underpins general relativity. Even if we were to find one, it wouldn't necessarily help. Based on our current understanding of what we think wormholes might be like, 
they should be inherently unstable. Scientists have come up with some clever ways we might be able to stabilize them, but that requires the use of so-called exotic matter to essentially prop them open. Unfortunately, exotic matter, matter that is repelled rather than attracted by gravity, like wormholes, also may or may not actually exist. So yeah, this kind of teleportation involves using a purely theoretical substance to help us travel through purely theoretical objects. Let's just say travel by wormhole isn't exactly a banker right now. Oh, and I should probably mention the small issue that the maths we've used to predict wormholes also seems to suggest they would allow time travel, which plenty of scientists assume is a big no-no in our universe. For this reason, Stephen Hawking predicted that travel by wormhole may simply be impossible. Basically to prevent the kind of glaring plot holes commonly found in stories about time travel from cropping up in our universe. For now, we simply don't know enough about the nature of our reality to say for sure whether or not teleportation is a realistic possibility for our species. Not just now, but ever. Then again, it's probably a safe bet that you won't be teleporting to work in the coming decades, and probably not in the next few centuries either. Sorry about that, but thanks for watching. Do you really enjoy my content, but you literally can't be asked to use your eyes? Then you're in luck, because you can now listen to the new Random Interesting Facts podcast with me, 42. Available on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. You'll find a link to it in the description below. Check it out today and give your eyes a break. You're welcome.